Hi everyone, my name is Kivan. I've been living in Albania for five years, black American from New York, and I have a lot to say about living here because a lot of people make videos on Albania, but they're just traveling and not actually living here. So why even make a video if you're not actually living in a place because traveling doesn't give you a real experience. And in this video, I'm gonna keep it 100. I got 22 different topics to discuss and talk about. And again, nothing is meant to be offensive. This is just my experience and I'm probably not gonna edit this video. So I'm gonna run through this as fast as I possibly can. If it's moving too slow, hit times two. So the first thing I wanna talk about is acts of kindness. Gonna look at my notes on the side as well. So let me tell you about my first month in Albania, which was the worst month of my entire life. I luck, but also great things happen. So this, uh, the Airbnb host, uh, I was going to Tirana. I arrived in Duras uh, from the port. And he drove from Tirana to do this, picked me up, which was wonderful. I didn't know anyone in the country, and I was just so grateful that this guy drove like 40 minutes, maybe an hour, to pick me up, drive back to the Airbnb, uh, and let me stay there. Uh, the only thing, the problem that I had with the Airbnb is that I had roaches in the whole building, and I don't like roaches. So I couldn't cook, and I had already unpacked. I had the place booked for a month. I had two weeks to find my own apartment, and I didn't have any friends there. Um, and, uh, what else was going on? And yeah, second week I lost my online teaching job. So now I'm like unemployed looking for an apartment and just roaches. And it's just, it's just a nightmare. Luckily I found an apartment. And so acts of kindness talking about the lawyer who helped me out greatly. Uh, second thing that happened as I was moving to my new apartment, I had to find a taxi and explained to the taxi where I lived and whatnot, but I couldn't because I didn't speak the language, I didn't know anything. So the pizza guy, or the guy, worked, the guy who worked at the pizza shop up the street, left his job, uh, came with me to the taxi, took the taxi to my house, came with me up into my apartment, helped me carry my luggage down, put it in the car, took the taxi with me to my new uh, apartment, carried my luggage into the new apartment, stayed and waited and translated for the landlord because uh, she didn't speak English. And then I offered him some money so he could like, you know, go back because I really appreciated his help and he would not accept the money. And this is a common thing here sometimes. People will not accept money and they will go out of their way to help you. A lot of times, even when I'm just walking down the street, people will be like, hey, you look lost, you need directions. It happens a lot. Another example is actually from today. Crazy day. So we were in Saranda. We're supposed to be coming to Vlora. We missed the bus. Um, our bus also kind of broke down-ish. So we waited for 45 minutes. Uh, we were supposed to get off at a city called Levan. Our bus passed our stop a bit. So we're walking in the middle of the highway. It's dark outside. We're waiting for like the actual buses to stop and pick us up because it works like that here. If you're here, you understand. If you've never been here, then you'll get it when you come. And um, two buses passed us and did not pick us up. And we were on the side of the road for minimum 35 minutes. And it's cold. It is brick outside. And luckily, uh, one car stopped, pulled us over like a, in a beater car. And it was a police officer. And it was wonderful. Uh, we had a nice chat with him. He dropped us off. So that was nice. Another thing of active kindness I want to touch on is people inviting you out for coffee. That's It's a very common thing. Or inviting you out and say, oh, I'll pay for your food. They treat you a lot. Even if they don't have a lot, these people are very kind. As you probably have already heard, hospitality is like a really important thing here in Albania. And that is, they, they live by that hospitality stuff. Like it, it, it's, it's unmatched from any other place that I've been to. But also as a preference, I've only really lived in Holland, Belgium, and Italy, and in the U.S. So out of these places, Albania has been the most hospitable. I think I can say about act of kindness is that they are sincere. No matter where you are from, Albanians really take an interest in like in you as a person. Like this one lady, we were at a Dua Lipa concert, which was free. And the lady next to me was like from Malaysia. And I didn't really have a huge interest in Malaysia. I just noticed that she wasn't from here. So I started a conversation. And then the person in front of me heard she was from Malaysia. And she kind of turned around and just started asking her questions. Questions I didn't ask because I really was not that interested. Next thing, number two prices of living or cost of living rent varies a lot i would say foreigners pay too much for their rent i know some people who are paying like a thousand dollars over a thousand dollars eight hundred eight hundred dollars or euros whatever and i'm going to say one thing is that we are gentrifying this country and we're making the rent expensive so listen when you come to albania you see these crazy rent prices double check stop paying rent that's so high because you're making it harder for everyone else to live here okay that's what i want to say uh, so now my places where I've lived, the first place I lived cost about $250. Second place I lived, same amount. Uh, the third place I lived here, I was paying about $350. And the current place I'm at, I'm paying $300. And I have, but I mean, it's special that I got it for this cheap. It's, I mean, this is not, you know, you got to figure stuff out. But two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and two balconies, and I'm good. I would say on average, the 
friends that I have that are not Albanian pay like 400 to 600 a month. And my Albanian friends probably pay like 200 to 300 a month, if I'm guessing. Number three, residency process. Now I'm gonna do a little ad here. Kanini Consulting and uh, my friend Tahir, who's a lawyer, a hey, congratulations to him. Um, have been the most helpful. He's helped me and he's helped several, several of my friends get our residency. So I have my five-year Albania residency now. Uh, other thing I want to mention is that now Albania has a digital nomad visa. Uh, do your own research and look it up. And if you need help moving here, um, I'll put his maybe contact information below or something like that. Um, whether you want to just get a work visa here or open your own business here, the, they are the people to talk to and walk you through, your, walk you through the steps because they're punctual, uh, and they're very honest and they stay up to date. And those are like three very important things to have. And of course, speaking English as well. Uh, fourth thing, traveling in the country. It's hard, it's hard, but don't be afraid to ask people on the street or have an Albanian friend point it out because going from city to city can be a bit confusing sometimes because the amount of information that you have online is not very clear or accurate or up to date. So what you can also do is join the Facebook group. I think it's called like expats in Albania or expats in Tehran or something like this. And you'll be able to find it. Number six, sorry, number five, language learning. Albanian uh, would be my, let's say my fifth language uh, that I would be able to speak, but I still don't speak it yet. I'm struggling with it. It's hard, but it's not impossible. My personal problem with the language, and you might find this as well if you move to Tirana, is that uh, a lot of people will not speak to you in Albanian because they want to practice their English or they think English is just easier. So if you want to really learn this language, either take lessons online, go to like one of the schools, or hang around people who are older, or go to like a village or something where English is not actually spoken. Uh, there's a book that you can probably find online for free. It's called Discover Albania or Discovering Albania, one of these two. There's a workbook and a textbook, and out of all the language books I've read, and trust me, I have read a lot, this is probably the best language book in general on how to teach a language to somebody because it breaks it down in a very logical order. And that's, the be that's, a that's all I have to say about it. Next, number six, is politics. One word, this country is corrupt. Money is laundered right and left. Like, it is insane. I'll give you a quick example. Credence Bank, I was there for eight weeks trying to open a bank account, and I went... <laughs> I went back, waited early in the morning in a line. And guess what? Let me add this here. People do not really like wait in lines. Uh, they kind of pu push a little bit or they just stand next to you. And it's, it's, it's not like, you know, a proper line or a queue like you would see other places. And basically the reason why they didn't open my bank account is because I was American and you know how the IRS likes to check up on us when we're abroad. And the bank doesn't want to be investigated because of their shady practices. Another example is the new zoo here that had like, a, I don't know, it was like a $7 million or $8 million budget. Half the animals in that zoo are birds and ducks. Like, come on. Like, how is that even possible? So the zoo I've been through before, it had like a three-legged bear, a lion with a paralyzed face because it was being abused. It was awful. It's nicer now, but it's not. Come on now. When you go to that zoo, there's no way you're going to be like, wow, they spent $8 million on this. I don't believe it. Uh, the next thing I want to say is that Albanians know it's corrupt. And I can appreciate, not appreciate the blatant corruption, but like, you know, Obviously, the U.S. is corrupt. If you've lived in New York State, you know how much you pay for those tolls and how much you pay for the Tampanzee Bridge. And the roads in New York State are terrible because I don't know where that money is going. And guess what? People here don't know where the money is going anyway, except uh, inside some politician's pocket. Okay, sorry. I had to stop recording because I got a phone call. So now let me move to point number seven and eight. Number seven is the good. Number eight is the ugly. We're going to be positive first. So the good. Great things. The weather. The weather here is fantastic. It is barely ever cold. When it rains sometimes, yes, it does flood because sometimes, you know, the drainage system is not amazing. But overall, I remember the, when I first moved to Albania, I didn't see a cloud for the first two weeks. And I was just like, yo, this feels like another word, world. This is bizarre because the sun is just always shining. And yeah, most of the time it's really sunny here. Next, fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables here in Albania are, I cannot, if you live in the US, you have not tasted real fruits and vegetables until you've come to Albania. That's all I can say about that. Same thing for bread. The quality of the bread here is fantastic. Next good thing are the cafes. There are probably, I can't even say how many cafes like there are on each street, but there's, a ton of them, way too many cafes. And it's great because if you are a person who wants to work, uh, like you're working from home, but you wanna be outside of your house, there are a lot of cafes that you can work from. Um, and I don't think it's a huge problem if you stay there more than an hour, just like, you know, ordering something small to, because people here will order, co order coffee and chit chat for like an hour, hour and a half. 
So you won't, you shouldn't feel bad about, you know, going there. Just make sure you leave a tip as well. I forgot to mention tipping in here. You'll figure it out. Anyway, next great thing that's great are the mountains. Personally, because I love mountains, there's tons of mountains here in Albania. The next thing that's good is I think there is a police presence here, but it doesn't feel as overbearing as it is in the US. And I could be speaking from the lens of a black man, I'm not sure. But I like the absence of police presence where it kind of feels more free. There are rules, but again, you have to just experience it for yourself. The next thing that's good is that Albanians are fun to hang around. I can definitely say that they they are fun, fun people. Now, the ugly, some of the ugly things I want to mention. A lot of people here are very friendly, but they are there's a lot of ignorant people here. Um, like, let me give an example and part of my language for anyone if I offend anyone. So like, you know how we have, I think Chris, oh, I forgot, Chris Rock or Chris Tucker did a skit where he said we have black people and then we have niggas. And these are, you know, kind of the same, but niggas behave a bit different. Um, and one way uh, somebody described niggas to me, they're like, yeah, you know, like crabs in a bucket when one person makes it out and they're trying to be successful, one of uh, another crab will pull them down so that they stay, you know, on the same level. That's the same thing here. You have two different groups here. You have like their group and then you have the nigger version of them. Sorry for my language, but it is what it is. Next thing that's about that's ugly, toxic behaviors and relationships, whether it's like, you know, dating or family or friendships, a lot of toxic behaviors to the point where that, where I meet somebody who, if I meet someone who was like a healthy, communicative person, it surprises me. Next, number nine, homophobia. Yes, Albania is very homophobic. Not as much towards foreigners, but definitely towards locals. There's a lot of down low, down low people here. So if you're a foreigner, I wouldn't say it's necessarily dangerous for you, um, but just be mindful that um, it's not easy for the locals. So don't expect them to you know, show PDA out in public or be very open to you because it is not a safe situation because Albania is, let me just speak about Toronto. Toronto is a big city but most people are from a village and a lot of people know each other. It's a small community in that sense. Um, if you want to get involved in volunteer and whatnot, there's a volunteer agency called Streha. Um, so yeah, look S-T-R-E-H-A if you want to look them up. Um, obviously very transphobic here as well. Um, I would say people here are a bit oblivious to like the whole gay thing existing to the point that if you see like, you know when you see a guy, he got a little bit of sugar in his tank and he has a girlfriend and you know it's like, she's clearly the beard. Here people just be like, oh, he's straight. He has a girlfriend because it's like, how could you be gay? That's like, you know, the thing. Number 10 is my personal TikTok adventure here because I started using TikTok and it blew up a little bit to like 10,000 followers. I don't post often, I don't check TikTok, but it helped me meet a lot of cool people here. And sometimes people will stop me on the street and they're like, oh, I, re I recognize you from that video. And it really showed me how, how can I say this? Through my TikTok experience, I realized the degrees of separation in Albania are definitely really small and everyone knows each other. Example is when uh, I was, my first apartment, I had like, I was on the top floor and had two older neighbors next to me. And when I would go downstairs, I would sometimes, cause they leave their garbage outside. I would just take their garbage with me and throw it out. And I had a friend who lived in the next section over from me. Cause I was in like, uh, Vasil Shanto and she was living in an area called Comuna and I was taking her garbage out as well and she was like oh I heard you take your neighbor's garbage out and I was like how in the world did you hear that from all the way over here she's like well I know a person who knows somebody else who lives in your building and that person talked to this person and I was like wow people are really talking people talk people talk here in Albania if you want to learn anything people talk here keep your business private anyway next Music and club scene. Um, I would definitely say this is my personal opinion. Oh, sorry, first let me say that um, the clubs get wild and turn and people are having fun when Albanian music is playing. Albanians love Albanian music. If you're looking for like just generic uh, pop, hip hop music, that techno whatnot, the music scene is, part of my language, it is ass. The music scene is terrible here. I've hated every DJ that I've heard. They do not know how to DJ. They do not know how to uh, mix songs. They just know and out of all the years I've been here, maybe two months ago was the first time I see one person who knows how to dance at a club. Again, I'm not talking about Spanish dancing, that's a whole different category. They have a lot of Spanish dancing here. I have a friend who does that, but just like club, it's just like hip hop, pop, techno, that type of vibe. Um, 
most people do not dance and a lot of the places don't allow people to dance because they have tables in the middle of the dance floor. So when you go out, most Albanians will go out to just look cool and just smoke and just drink. It's that it, that's it. Next point, number 12, since we're on like this topic is drug usage. Uh, a lot of drugs here in Albania. I had no idea, no idea people were using this many drugs here. Like weed, not legal, but also like 500 like a bag. Cocaine, not legal, but I've had so many people offer me cocaine. Like it is insane that people that just use cocaine. Again, I can't talk anything of, uh, about it, but just know that it is more prevalent than what I've seen. I don't know, I, I've never lived in Germany or Berlin because you know, it's probably more wild there, but in the places I've lived in, I've, I've definitely noticed it. It's I, It seems more normalized here. It's like, oh, you've done cocaine? Whatever. Mushrooms, on the other hand, psychedelics are not popular. Hard to find. Next, 13, religion. Uh, obviously, you know that Albania is a Muslim slash Christian country, mostly Muslim. Um, from my experience, I think for most people, religion is more like a name tag, and it's not something that people like follow harshly uh, because there are Muslims who eat pork. There are Muslims who drink alcohol. There are Christians who celebrate Muslim holidays. It's like, it's... The religion is not in their heart. I would not say that most people here are devout. Other thing I can say is that, man, they really do not like Jehovah's Witnesses here because when I first came here, a lot I was receiving a lot of hate. And um, it was because there's a lot of, not a lot, maybe like seven cases of suicides, especially with young people here, relating to Jehovah's Witnesses. So that's why they have like a, a bad whatever towards them. Number 14, black hair products. We've have maybe, we have maybe like three barbers here who can cut black hair that I know of, and they're all in Toronto, luckily. Personally, I shaved my head bald a couple days ago just because like a personal project that I'm working on. So if you see why I look different, this is why I shaved it all off. Um, the only product I think you can find is Cantu. And from what I hear, it's not an amazing product, but the store Rosman sells it. Otherwise, if you want black hair products, the closest thing you're going to find to black people is either Italy, like in Rome, they have some shops. And I, I assume, I assume in Athens, Greece, that there should be some because there's black people there. And Athens, Greece is like a overnight $30, $25 bus ride from Toronto, if I'm not mistaken. Next, 15. This is just some experiences from other tourists that I've heard. Uh, I'm going to quote a Polish woman that I met. And this Polish woman said that she feels safer here than she does in Poland. Another black woman that, I've, that I know, uh, she says that uh, Albanians always stare, they always talk to her, and they always bother her every time she's walking the street. But not in a way where it's like harassing and touching you. I don't think anyone will ever touch you, but definitely they will approach you in a conversation and talk to you and like be very pushy um, for women. That's from what I've heard. 16, safety. Albania is very, very, very safe. America is wild. I haven't even watched the news yet, but I know there was like a mass shooting at a mall or something like that recently. But yeah, here, if there's a shooting or car bomb, car bombs, or murder, it's almost always personal, which means mind your business, don't start stuff, and you'll be fine. I know one lady, she was on a bus and she got pickpocketed and she was like, yeah, it's not safe, but she was stupid. She wasn't using her common sense. Like if you if you travel, if you've been in New York City, you should know how to behave, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna say is that um, you will stand out if you aren't Albanian because if you aren't Albanian, you probably don't look Albanian and people will notice this immediately based on your facial features or based on the way you dress. So you will stand out, keep that in mind. The only real safety I would say is from driving and crossing the street, because I think I read that most deaths happen because of car related incidents. Because here I've seen people drive and no one, they, there is no concern for life when people are driving, especially amongst boys. When they drive, they are the worst. People love to speed. Uh, the whole idea, like I said, corruption, also corruption with this, because some people, some, I'm not going to say how many, because I don't know, people pay for their licenses, and there's a lot of overconfidence while driving without actual skill, and like, ugh, the driving is just terrible, that's all I can say here, but I mean, it's probably worse in other places as well, but just in comparison to where I've, to, in comparison to where I've lived, dangerous driving, but again, I don't think you'll die, I don't think it's anything too bad to worry about, I'm just making a comparison. 17, scams in Albania. I cannot think of any scams in Albania. Maybe people will lie about the prices of fruits and vegetables at stands. So I would say that anywhere where you don't see a cash register or like barcodes, be careful. But like 90% of all my experiences have been with honest people. And even after five years of living here, I think it's so cute sometimes because like I'll hand people money and I know how much it costs, but like they'll put my money on the counter and they'll like 
put each coin out and kind of count it for me to show me that they're not cheating me out of my money. And that happens pretty often. And it's a beautiful thing that I love because it's like, it, it's slow. I know how much it costs, but it's just nice to see, people, to see people like, we know you're a foreigner. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel safe. So we're going to show you that we're not cheating you out of your money. And also, if you see something that costs like 500 luck and they just say five euros, they're not trying to teach you out your money. It's just the easiest thing because don't expect these people to know how to convert your money at a fruit and vegetable stand. They don't have time for this. Pay the money. Keep it moving. 18, black community. Let me talk about this from my black people who are listening. So Toronto, and all honesty, out of any place I've lived, I've had the most African-American friends in Toronto. I don't know why we are all here, but we are in this. Okay, so uh, there's also people from Africa and the Caribbean as well. A lot of soccer players, and I want to speak to you soccer players for a second because this is based on other soccer players I've talked to. So if you're looking to come to, if you're looking to come to Albania and leave Africa because maybe you want something better, let me let you know. There are people who have left Albania and returned to their home country in Africa because it has been better there than it has been here. Again, racism exists in Albania, even in sports. Uh, I've heard the players talk about how other players will talk about them, instigate, try to fight them. I definitely have heard stories of coaches holding your passport and your residency permit so you can't switch to other teams. I've heard this a lot. So be very careful before you come here playing soccer thinking that your life is going to change, okay? I've had soccer players who are struggling and ask for money because, you know, they're not getting paid. They're not getting paid for months. Like it can be four or five months and they have not gotten paid at all from their, I don't know, whoever pays them on their, their team. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is uh, how people in Albania will ask to take pictures with you. And if you're black, you're coming here, just do it. It's not going to hurt you. You're here for the experience. And that's part of it. A lot of people will say, hello, my friend, and, and just yell that to you from across the street. Just smile at them. They don't mean harm. Um, even if they stare, they stare all the time. I just smile and wave. Um, but caution, if you are a guy, I would not smile and wave at a woman because you know how the men here are over their women. So like, you know, you don't want to start anything with that. 19, dating Albanians. I've heard a lot about this online. People have asked this question. So firstly, cheating is a universal concept, but I've noticed in the LGBT community here in Albania, there's a lot of cheating. And now if you're dating men, keep this in mind. Albanian moms coddle their sons the same way Italians do in a sense of they do everything for them from the cooking to their laundry and all household chores. The men are typically not responsible for doing this. It's very, very traditional. So keep that in mind. If you're dating an Albanian men, make sure they are 100% independent before you start the relationship unless you want to play the role of the mom. Dating women, on the other hand, I have no idea. But the one thing I can say is that I've noticed here that people will date a long time before meeting the parents because you kind of introduce the parents when you know you're going to get married to this person. It's not like in the U.S. you're like, hey, mom, this is my new girlfriend. We've only been dating for like a month or two. They, they don't do that here. Next thing I want to say, I've heard the statement a lot, never date Albanian men. I do not agree with making generaliz generalizations, but always look at how people were raised because there are a lot of cases, of, a lot of cases of domestic violence here. So I'm just putting this on your radar. Next thing is that there's a lot of fetishizing here as well. If you are not, if you're, let's say, black or Asian or, or Latino or whatever. I've gotten so many messages from people saying, hey, chocolate chip, hey, dark chocolate, stuff like this. And it's, it's annoying. Next thing, they do not know how to flirt and dazzle women and sweep them off their feet. If you're looking for a pure sense of romance, this is not the place for it. Also, I noticed a lot of the men are very, very possessive over their women. I've heard this about Turkish men as well. I don't know, but I've, I've seen it here as well, how people can be very possessive. Keep that in mind for yourself. Number 20, would I live here forever? Yes and no. I would like the permanent residency because I've already committed enough time here, but I would not want to grow old, old in this country just because at the moment, the current healthcare system sucks. It's also not a handicap uh, accessible country or handicap friendly country. So I would definitely need to see a lot of changes before I'm like, you know what, I'm going to commit 100% and I'm going to die here. No, not yet. Uh, 21 is the type of people that you're going to find while living here. 
Uh, so there's a lot of Americans who have nowhere else to go but come here because we can just stay here for a year. Uh, there's a lot of Italians who come here because they want a cheaper life and they don't want to use another language because most Albanians speak Italian. So Italians will come here because they can just keep using the same language, have some of the similar food, similar stores and whatnot. And it's also close to home. You'll find a lot of travelers who have been to many places. I've noticed that most people here or most people who come here have lived somewhere else before or they're well traveled, which is nice for conversation because you can have, you know, the type of tourists that you're going to meet in Paris or Amsterdam is very different than the type of tourists you're going to meet here in uh, Albania, which is, and I prefer the type of people that come here to Albania, to be honest. Uh, one thing I can say is that not everyone is running away from something, but there is a reason that they come here that's outside of working and volunteering. There's always, I don't know why, but there's always at least like a sad event in their life that brings people here. So keep this in mind when making friends. Number 22 that I wanna talk about is Albanian pride. Albanians love their country and I love that for them. They're so, they're proud of their country. That's a great, it's a, a sense of pride that I think everyone should have. And I will proudly rep and wear an Albanian flag all day because I have a lot of respect for them. And they throw up like, you know, the, the they throw this up like gang signs. When they take pictures, they're always like, ah, like you should see it. Like they just love their country so much. Even though they recognize our country, like you talk to an Albanian, it's kind of like a love-hate relationship. They're like, oh, our country's so terrible. But guess what? We're the best. And that's kind of like the vibe you get. And I'm all for it. Second thing is that I'll get to keep. Please remember that Albania is kind of like fresh out of communism. So from where for where they are right now, from where they came from, they have come pretty far. And also keep in mind that generational trauma is a thing. So obviously things are not going to be perfect here in any aspect that you look at, but things are slowly uh, getting better. And again, I'm speaking from the perspective of a foreigner because maybe for our local things probably are not getting as good. Again, just keep that in mind uh, for the experience. Um, and normally I would say like, you know, if you wanna, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I don't know if I'll be able to respond or answer any questions. I don't know if anyone will even see this video, but I just wanted to make it because I saw this girl on Instagram, or sorry, on YouTube, and she went to Afghanistan and she made her video. I was like, you know what? I need to make a video about Albania because no, I don't think there's any black people here who've actually made a video. We're all living here, but none of us are just like on YouTube like that. So if you have any questions, join the Facebook group. Uh, you can contact Tahir from the Konini Consulting. He can give you any advice to help you move here to help you get your residency. And if you come to Albania, just make sure, respect the people, respect the customs, remember where you are and have a good time. And don't worry if you hear, if you hear anything, because let me just say this, I didn't add this to my list, but before I came to Albania, before I moved here, I heard so many negative things from my friends. They're like, don't go to Albania. It's dangerous. They all do drugs. Um, there's like uh, human trafficking. Have you seen the movie Taken? Etc. Etc. And to be honest, I am just fine. This is the safest I've ever felt. Because normally when I walk around anywhere, every, let's say 30 seconds, I take a look behind me to see if there's anyone following me or anything like that. Here in Albania, I've gotten so accustomed to living in safety that I don't even look behind me anymore. Now, I still will never put my wallet in my back pocket because I think that's stupid. Uh, but... If I did it, I wouldn't really worry about someone stealing it from me. Let me just put it like that. It's a beautiful country. I recommend anyone or everyone to come here and visit and just check it out for yourself. Because again, my experience may be very different than your experience. And um, yeah, that's it. So everyone, uh, thank you for watching this video on my five, year my five year experience of living in Albania. And if there are questions, maybe put them in the comment section. If I have time, I'll answer them. But, you know, it's the Christmas is tomorrow and New Year's is coming up. So we're going to get lit. And that's all. Keep on out. Bye, guys.